How's it going, Kings? It's he's literally me, bro. Hope y'all are having a great day. And today I'm going to do story time for you guys. It's going to be a bit of a longer story, so I'm just going to start right off. Essentially, it is, it's December of 2021. Your boy is, uh, you know, I'm working, right? At this point, I had a decent job. I had a nice apartment. I lived in New York, which sucked, but I lived in, like, not in the city. I lived in rural New York. I had a decent job, nice apartment, whatever. And... I was doing all right for myself, you know, and for some reason at this point, I basically just spammed my Facebook, like my main Facebook, my Facebook feed, uh, nonstop with like libertarian memes, right? I was based and red pilled, you know, it's just nonstop like lib right memes, and I just spammed that, like thinking like, oh yeah, if my my four hundred friends uh, keep seeing like you know my my libertarian memes on their feed that I'm going to like change the world or something, right? And during this time, a guy on my Facebook, we didn't know each other yet, a great friend of mine, essentially reached out to me. And we had talked for the first time and he essentially said, uh, you're, you know, you're posting all these, these libertarian memes, I'm libertarian too, you know, how about you, you know, how about you come work for us? Uh, how about you come work to to promote liberty, right? We're going to travel, you know, you'll travel all over and you'll promote liberty and they'll pay for like gas and housing and, and they'll, they'll give you money. And first, first point I just immediately responded was, you know, no thanks. Like, see ya. No thanks. I didn't know who this guy was, you know, but then I kept thinking about it, right? The job I had was like boring, right? It was great pay, but it was boring. I didn't feel like I was making a change in the world. I just kind of existed. And that happened, that happened for a few days, right? I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about it for a few days. I'm like, okay, you know what, let me look more into it. I got a hold of him again. And I'm like, why don't you just tell me some more info about the job? So we talked for about an hour about the job. And I essentially was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, maybe I will do some Liberty work for a while. So I put in a two-week notice at my current job. I didn't want to just leave them, you know, you have to be professional. And after that, uh, they were having a, they were having their campaign in New Hampshire. So I drove up to New Hampshire and I joined the campaign. So I'm just going to give you some quick context about how this sort of political campaigning works. So what you do is you, you, the unofficial layman terms for it is essentially you're a door knocker, right? So how the campaign works for any of these Liberty places is there's like a manager that they usually call like the director and under the director is going to be a bunch of door knockers and every day the director is either going to knock doors or he's going to do paperwork and all the door knockers are going to go knock doors and you're given like a ton of pamphlets and you're told like a bunch of houses ahead of time here's what you're knocking and you go to a bunch of neighborhoods that you've probably never been to in your entire life and you start knocking on doors and if somebody answers you tell them why they should vote or think a certain way and try to give them a pamphlet if they don't answer you put it on their doorknob right well that was my job and what we were campaigning for in New Hampshire I was working for what was called the Hazlitt coalition at this time was we were trying to stop uh, it's been like a year, or it's been over a year, so I'm trying to remember the exact thing that we were trying to do, but we were attempting to get a bill passed that would, what would it do? It would stop the governor's ability to close the state for anything like COVID in the future, right? Now, New Hampshire didn't really have that much in the way of lockdowns. Uh, for those like I think it was like two or three weeks where they were asked to wear uh, masks in buildings and that was about it Hampshire, New Hampshire didn't really do lockdowns um it, it didn't or at least not that bad so we were attempting to tell a bunch of people that never really had to deal with lockdowns uh hey you need to tell your government to don't do lockdowns in the future and it 
it went out it went over about as well as you think uh we didn't win this campaign we didn't get this pass it never worked we spent five months trying to get it passed and we didn't have anything to show for it i'm not gonna lie um not enough representatives voted for this bill not enough representatives were there to pass the bill saying the governor can't do emergency lockdowns with the state that's we spent five months trying to say new hampshire the governor shouldn't be able to do that with his own state and it didn't work uh you could think about that what you will but that's essentially what happened now as for some stories while on the new hampshire campaign um i'd have to say it was pretty interesting first thing i have to mention was my car when i got there my car i was driving in 08 I was driving a 2008 Subaru Legacy, which is like a sedan and it's kind of low to the ground, which normally isn't a problem if you're driving on a road. But it was a problem if you're driving on New Hampshire's back roads, which is nothing but potholes and roots and stuff. And I, I was told to drive down some really bad roads while there. And I fucked up the undercarriage of my car, and I fucked up so many parts of my old car. It had about 115k miles. It was a car from 08. And essentially what had happened from this was, I kid you not, I ended up becoming good friends with a shop there, because I had taken my car there so many times. I spent $5,500 over the course of five months of my own money fixing my car. None of these Liberty places will ever give you money to fix your car if something goes bad during it. They don't give you uh, mileage or anything. They don't give you... Essentially, there's two kinds of people that are working, right? There's the people that have cars and people that don't. If you show up with a car, you're expected to run it into the ground so they can have a campaign. So basically, the, the, the company, what it will do is it will look at you and it will say, you know, and bear in mind, these places, they're hiring usually younger people that don't, like if their car just gets fucked up, they don't have money and they're fucked. I had to uh, take on some debt and use my entire tax refund to pay for my car during all this. This, these Liberty companies, and I was working for Hazlitt Coalition at the time, told me to go fuck myself when it came to the car. They wanted me to use my car and run it into the ground for them because a lot of the people that came to that deployment didn't have a car of their own. They were 30-year-olds that didn't have cars. They, were, they joined a traveling job to knock doors. They didn't have their own cars. But I did. So... It was my obligation as part of that job to basically spend all the money I got working for them into my car so they can keep doing door knocking. So that company could keep telling other people to door knock. If that sounds like a scam, I ain't gonna lie, you know, it, it kind of was. It kind of was. I, I was kind of used for the first five months of my employment with the Libertarians. Um, and that, that wasn't fun. I'm not going to lie. It was also very frustrating because most of the team I worked with while being great guys were very entitled to my car and my help. What would happen was we would leave the house at like nine 30 and everybody would go to the bathroom at like nine 30 right before we left. I kid you not. I kid you not. By 10.30 or 11, I would have somebody blowing up my phone. Come pick me up. I need to go to the bathroom. Come pick me up. Literally, there was... They, they will not go to the bathroom in the forest for some reason. Because it's New Hampshire. It's basically just the woods. And I would have to stop everything I was doing that work day. Drive 20 minutes to where they were. Pick them up. Drive to a gas station so they can go to the bathroom wait for them to finish going to the bathroom, pick them back up, and then drive this person to where they needed a knock. And I would have to do that with several people. 
And I had to do that for five months. All while I'm paying the wear and tear of my car. The only thing they paid for was the gas. As far as the car went. Right? And, like I said, the worst part was they were entitled. If I ever told them to wait, I don't want to stop what I'm doing to come pick you up. I'm sorry that you have, like, no fucking bladder. Uh, they would make my life hell. A lot of... They would... Like I said, they were great guys. But if I didn't bend over backwards to do everything in my power to make my life easier for a fucking 30-year-old that doesn't have a car yet, then I would just get screwed. Or they would start... They would start becoming assholes. They would tell me that I just don't understand how hard it is for them or some shit like that, right? That grown, grown ass adults doing this. And so that, that wasn't fun. That was not fun. Uh, but on to some better stories, right? I will have to say the camaraderie of my first deployment in New Hampshire was great. So we'd door knock all day. And then we would get home right and what it was it would be great time like we would all sit together and we'd all play like risk or we'd watch i forgot what was called the show with dexter the the dude that like murdered people but he worked for the police uh, we'd all watch that together we'd all play risk together i'll never forget the days where like you know we're all playing civilization or uh watching like, one of buddies of mine, well, after work day, he would play, like, the Mass Effect collection. And then he would just talk all day, you know, about, like, the moral moral aspects of all your decisions and Mass Effect and stuff. And it was interesting. And we had great times. And then another thing to note is, while you were doing this, I mean, they knew that a lot of these people that were working for them were, like, kind of half mentally handicapped. I'm sorry, that's mean, but look, but it's not wrong. And they knew that they couldn't save money or anything to save their lives. So what they would do <clears throat> is you would get like 20 or $25 a week for food. Right? So at one point, we decided, hey, look, we're going to take our $25 during the New Hampshire campaign. And we went to... It was Olive Garden. Shut up, stupid phone. And we went to Olive Garden. And we were having fun. For this day, dude, we were feeling extra fine, bro. We were feeling crazy. So we walk in. We say, give us a table. Okay, they gave us a table by the front door. That was their big mistake. We spent the entire dinner that night, like, saying the most like dog whistly anti-semitic shit you could possibly think about my my team like when we were just fogging around we were fogging around we had fun we would we did well together it was a great time and so we we were having fun and that was dude that was a great time we would have s some shenanigans together another great time was there was one point where me and a couple of the guys i was working with out of the team decided that we were going to go watch that new batman movie uh, the one that just came out, that all the memes were made of, like, something's in the way, or, you know, that shit. And we were like, oh, hell yeah. So we went out, and we were about to watch it. And the guys I was working with had, like, I want to say hopefully just pot or something. But, like, they had taken something, and we go into the movie theater, and we sit down. And it was a joke. It was a joke. One of them goes, like, the movie starts. And it was this guy's idea to go to the movie. Right? He knew it was Batman. We get in there. The movie starts. He goes, whoa, this is a Batman movie. It was his idea. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. It was the funniest shit ever. It was the funniest shit ever, dude. And um, that's all that great. Uh, not every, Not every outing was successful at this group. There was one outing we did. We went to a Mexican restaurant, right? So I was the designated driver. I drive everybody there, right? We get there and we get there and we start ordering uh, Mexican food, stuff like that. Well, you know, it's the Mexicans, right? So 
they have they had what was called like a tequila tower, which was this huge thing of te- of tequila. And I was a designated driver. I didn't drink anything. I literally ordered chocolate milk. And, like, the waiter laughed at me. And I'm like, shut the fuck up or I'm going to call ice on you, dude. Just give me my fucking chocolate milk, right? But the, everybody else I was working with, they drink a ton of tequila. And they get hammered. And, dude, leg- legitimately, we're driving home. And one of the guys that was super entitled, he was an asshole to me the entire time. I'm dri- I'm literally driving. I drove this guy to the fucking Mexican restaurant so he can go get his dinner. And I'm driving him back from the Mexican restaurant. And he's just going, he's like, fuck you. You're a fucking asshole. I, you know, and all this shit. I've never been nothing but nice to this guy. And he's like, fuck you. You're a worthless piece of shit. You know, and, and all this shit. And I'm just driving him back. I'm like, dude, I, like what? Do-? And I literally said, I'm like, can't you just be nice to me? Like, I, I mean, a coworker. I don't do anything wrong. Can't you just be nice to me? Like, I was saying shit like that. And I'm literally driving. He's like, no, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. And, dude, I just, he just gave me, he just got drunk and gave me shit the whole fucking night. And I hated that, dude. I hated that. I'm like, I'm literally busting my ass, spending thousands of dollars of my own money on my car so we can actually have this campaign. Without my car, we could not have had that campaign. I was driving everybody everywhere. I was being used. I was being used by both Hazlitt Coalition, the company that I went, that I had, that I had stopped my job. And driven over there to work with them. I was being used by them. And I was being used by my co-workers. Because they didn't have a car. So they were just going to be entitled. And be an asshole to me. And use me and tell me what to do with a drop of a hat. And so he just he just gave me shit. And he just yelled at me. And told me to go fuck myself. For just out of nowhere. Like all night. Drunk. And I'm just like okay you know. And these are my co-workers. When you work together. In this traveling job, you're stuck together. You're stuck with them. It's it's not like a normal job where you do eight hours and go home. You don't have to see them. You're stuck with these guys. So I remember I got I got back, and I'm like, wow, today sucked, but whatever. And my roommate, who had also gotten drunk as fuck, uh, not my roommate, the the guy who was sleeping in the same room as me at that point had also gotten drunk as fuck. He comes back. And I'm not going to lie, this is actually kind of Chad. He comes back, you know, we're both back. He's drunk as fuck. Um, he, he literally starts going off about Roman history and why he thinks Rome is great. And he does this all the time when he's sober, right? You know, a- a- any dude with stones that dangle, you know, likes to talk about Rome. So he's talking about how great Rome is and everything, but he's super drunk. And then all of a sudden he just kind of falls down and then like, 10 seconds later, he's throwing up all over the floor. This isn't our house. We were, I think we were in a cheap motel at this point. This isn't our house. And this dude is throwing up all over it like midnight, throwing up all over the floor. And I'm just like, God damn it. So I went over and I, 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 I remember I kind of, I, uh, he, he went onto his back. And I'm like, shit, well, if he throws up again, I can't have this. So I went over, I sort of pulled him away from, like, the huge-ass pile of puke. And I rolled him back over onto his stomach. And I'm like, hey, you just, you know, lay here. I'm going to go get something to clean all this up. This is fucking midnight, dude. I just spent the whole day having drunk people yell at me, having my drunk coworker yell at me, uh, telling me I'm a worthless piece of shit, even though I bend over backwards to do everything for him and be nice to him. And now my other co-worker is throwing up everywhere. And now I have to clean it up at like fucking midnight. So I'm like, dude, today sucks. I'm being fucking used. I hate this shit. I went down to the lobby and I'm just like, you know, I, I'm just like, hey, my friend got sick and he threw up. You know, can you give me something to clean it up? And actually they were... I'm not going to lie, this was pretty based to the motel. Like, they went up and cleaned it themselves, and I was, like, fucking surprised. You know, and I'm, you know, and I'm trying to, like, hey, pay no attention to the drunk guy on the floor. You know, like, like, like just, cl- just clean it up and get out of here, bro. Just That's basically what I was telling them, but I was, it's pretty based to them. So, it was, we, we went through a lot. I Not we. I mean, we all did. I went through a lot. I remember after that day... Literally, it was only me and one other co-worker was able to go to work because I didn't drink. And either, I can't remember, either he 
was the one dude that didn't go to the Mexican restaurant that night. Or he just didn't drink that much. So, I took him. And, and keep in mind, what I'm about to tell you is a trend with the libertarians that you work with. I took him, and I remember we drove an hour and a half to where we had to knock. Because sometimes they put you really close to where you work. And sometimes you literally have to drive an hour and a half into work. And then you're expected to work all day. And then drive an hour and a half back because they don't get you... Uh, motels or airbnbs close to where you need to work but if you drive you're expected to just drive for three hours that day plus all around where you're working so they can have their campaign right so i remember i drove i was pissed dude i'm like i'm going through all this fucking horse shit doing all this fucking shit every you know all these motherfuckers being assholes to me and all they fucking do is is put myself out there and literally use up thousands of my fucking dollars so these guys can have a job and I'm being used. I'm being used. That's basically what a lot of the Hazlitt campaign in New Hampshire was, right? From January to May, for five months, basically the libertarians used me so they can push like the dumbest thing ever that didn't even get pushed, right? That's That's the libertarians for you. And... I was I was just so pissed that day. I remember that when I got to where I was supposed to be knocking, I basically just just kind of sat there all day. I dropped off the other guy and I just kind of sat there and I'm like, dude, I don't I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't know. This was like towards the end of the campaign. This was like April or maybe early May. And we went through that shit. And thankfully, all the stuff I went through uh, was for something, right? So the higher ups noticed all this shit I was going through and they said, hey, look. We're going to make you a promo. We're going to get you a promotion. We're going to make you a director, right? So you're going to be in charge of your own group. So it had I not gotten that promotion, then I probably would have just stopped working then and just gone back uh, and tried to live in New York again. As much as New York is hell. Because I, I, I lost money working for the libertarians because the libertarians... Because the libertarian political companies cannot take care of themselves. And they expect young people to, young people who don't really have that much in life, to sort of be tricked and use up what they have so the libertarians can try and further their message with this sort of shit. You're going to use up your car. You're going to use up your savings. You're going to use up your time. You're going to work six days a week, every week, nonstop, all year. So you can try and push whatever libertarian message was approved. But thankfully, I they said, okay, you're going to be a director. And I said, great. So then at that point, they said, okay, you're a director. Drive to South Carolina. So drive from New Hampshire to South Carolina. And you're going to be in charge of a team there. And I remember I specifically asked, because after I, after I became a director, basically a manager, you know, think of it as a manager. I specifically asked, I said, hey, you know, can you tell me more? You know, I didn't get any training for this position. I wasn't told anything for this position. It just kind of fell into my lap. You know, everything reminds me of her, right? No, but I was just like, hey, can you tell me anything I need to know? Any training? What's coming up? What's, you know, what's the work schedule? And essentially, my new boss at the time just was like, ah, I don't, I, I'm not going to tell you anything, right? I wasn't told anything. I needed to know about being a manager. So I drive from New Hampshire to South Carolina so I could be a manager for the Libertarians. And I get to my new group. And we we drive and we get there. I get there. And essentially, lo and behold, the reason why I got promoted so quick and was driven there and I drove there was the South Carolina team that was there at the time... Uh, their, their manager had just gotten fired. I was replacing a guy. And the reason this guy was fired was he was trying, he was trying to, he, he was giving drinks where you're technically not supposed to drink on campaign. Nobody follows that rule with the libertarians. Libertarians, libertarians, there's a lot of people that will drink and do drugs on campaign. They don't care. So, <clears throat> the guy I was replacing tried to get underage people to drink and was hitting on 
his workers and was hitting on like random chicks. I'm guessing they were inviting people over to the Airbnb they were staying at. And so they caught wind of this and they fired him. And they said, okay. They looked at me and they said, you're in charge of the campaign now. They didn't tell me anything. And then all of a sudden, there was this big event that was going on. I needed to get... My car started, at this point started misfiring because it was put through hell in New Hampshire and it was a bit old. So my car starts throwing up misfire signs. And I was going to get it repaired. But what had happened was I couldn't because they refused. They never told me. They refused to tell me that I had this big event that I needed to drive everybody around and take care of everybody all fucking day. And I'm just like, great. And that, that, that event was at the end and it was basically at the end. I came in at the end of this deployment. So like I said, great. I guess I'm not going to fix my car. The engine's just going to misfire. And I'm just going to hope that I don't get wrapped around a tree, right? And this, this group of people was, you know, relatively good. There was one dude that would literally go out, do no work. And then he would get mad if he didn't get paid, right? So he would go out. He wouldn't knock any doors. He wouldn't talk to anybody about liberty. He would basically sit there, stuff his face with McDonald's, and then come home like four hours early, and then act surprised that he didn't get paid. Keep this guy in mind, because there's you're about to hear about a lot of guys who do this. Um, essentially, a lot of the door knockers that I ended up working with... Uh, would either cheat to some extent or just didn't want to work they showed up to this job without a car and then they didn't want to do anything and i will tell you about more of that later but it was a relatively good group i had fun there was actually some really nice guys in that group that i had fun with uh management at this point the bureaucracy of it all they weren't telling me how to do my job they never trained me how to be a manager they didn't give me anything uh sort of fucked me over but we, we finished the end of this campaign. At this point, we were trying to get um, a Republican that was, like, liberty-leaning. We were trying to get a libertarian Republican elected through the primary, right? So we wanted him to represent the Republicans in the November 8th election. We lost uh, just about everything I did all year. We're like, we, we would just constantly lose, right? And that kind of sucked. But we lost... And then after that, uh, everybody was told, you know, okay, go to your next deployment. I was told that because my car was misfiring and you need a car to be a director, I was told that I would be given a week to drive. I was given a week to drive back to New York from South Carolina, get a new car. And then at the end of that, I would be expected to, by by the end of the week, I would be expected to be in Baltimore, Maryland for the next deployment that I had to be in charge of. So I'm like, okay. So I drove to New York, got a new car. Keep in mind, I'm poor because I just spent all this freaking money, basically, basically spending all the money I was getting paid by this by the libertarians into the libertarian deployments so i was fucking poor i basically bought most of my car on credit which is something i've been trying to avoid to do but i sort of had to do at that point so i'm like okay whatever get the car on credit i show up to the place it was literally like downtown where they had us in baltimore for the first part was downtown baltimore in like a fucking low income area that was really crowded and it was it was just a shitty time and i got there and for like the first two weeks there was a bureaucracy mix-up or like a first week and a half or week or so of the campaign there was a bureaucracy mix-up because you have to do something special to do political campaigning in maryland they couldn't legally do campaigning with some of the stuff they had So I get down there and there's another director there and we just don't do anything for the first like week or and a half or so. I still got paid because I was salaried and I still had paperwork to do. But all my workers did not get paid. They were told, hey, for your job, you need to go to Maryland. 
in the okay so they all went to maryland and then all these guys who have their own bills and everything to pay were just not paid for a week and a half and were not given any work and they just all kind of sat there and i remember during this time like you know i was still getting paid so even though i'm your boy's poor at this point you know i'm buying them food i'm taking care of them that sort of thing you know again for the millionth time the people that the libertarians hire couldn't take care of themselves, but the libertarians couldn't take care of themselves. So it fell on anybody who could take care of themselves to further extend themselves and take care of others. And let me tell you, it is not easy when you are 21 or 22, which was I was at the time, and you have no fucking money to take care of a bunch of freaking 30-year-olds. And that's basically what I did. And I was like, dude, this sucks. So the other director that was there with me ended up getting fired and I realized they put me there to replace him. So yes, I had to replace two directors back to back. The reason the second director got fired was he was made he was made a director and then didn't do any work or anything for a month and a half. Like he was made a director and then he just didn't do his job. And he was fired. <clears throat> But with this company, most people aren't really fired. So even though he was quote-unquote fired, they gave him a golden parachute and got him like a Liberty job elsewhere, right? And at this point, we were working for a Liberty place called Make Liberty Win. Well, the, the bosses of Make Liberty Win said, okay, well, you can't work for us. You don't do your job. But if you still want a Liberty job, you know, we could pull some strings to get you a job here, right? And which is what they did to him. So with still no training... And in the middle of downtown Baltimore, like the fucking slums, my job was to drive people out and do paperwork and make sure they were knocking. And I did that. And I, I got to tell you, so during this time, what normally, so normally in this, the standard of practice for the libertarians is the door knockers work six days a week. They basically get paid minimum wage, like fuck all nothing. And to help with that, they work six days a week. So what had happened was for the, for the first time in the entire basically year of all these guys working around July 4th, they were told, Hey, look, you're going to be given an extra day off you're gonna be given two everybody will be given two days off you'll be given like july 4th off right so we were like yeah dude and um i kid you not all right this is probably i'll i'll, I'll keep i'll keep it 100 with you guys this was probably not the most mature thing i could have done as a boss but i have to be honest with you guys okay i went out on the 4th of july weekend the only time we had two days off in a row i went out with my guys we went to a strip club <laughs> Um, where they had put us in Baltimore, the nearest grocery store was 10 miles away in the city. So that was in the city was like 10 miles away. But we had three strip clubs in walking distance. This is where we were at. So we went to the strip club. Uh, it sucked. Nothing really special happened. I got like, uh, what would you call it? Like, I guess technically sexually assaulted. I was like sitting there and one of the guys mentioned I was their boss so like the dancer thought that like i had money and came over and just like grabbed my dick just came over just just i'm just sitting there i didn't even like look at it she just comes over sits down next to me just grabs my sausage start like it, it, dude i had my pants on right it's not like i'm sitting there like i got my fucking dick out or anything this motherfucker is stroking my fucking dick through my pants bro and i'm just kind of surprised right i did i didn't like I didn't want her to do that, bro. Don't get me wrong, dude. Like, I want a hot chick, but I don't want just like, some random fucking hoe grabbing my fucking jewels, right? This chick fucking stroking me and shit. And I'm just like, bro, I don't want her to do this, but it happened so fast. I just, I didn't say no, and I just stared at her, bro. And she's like, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I give private dances. It's like $150 an hour, you know, you want, you know, and I was just like, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. And then, eventually she left me alone. Uh, we went home, and we get back, and, like, one dude was, like, playing, like, uh, Modern Warfare Warzone on the TV. And I'm legitimately, like, I just get back, and I'm like, bro, I would have had more fun playing Call of Duty. Because, like, dude, I'm telling you, 
Okay. I've held women that I've loved before. All right. Titties at the titty bar and nothing, dude. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. They don't love you back. They just want your fucking money. So, you know, it, it, was, it, it wasn't even fun. It wasn't even enjoyable, dude. They found a way to make boobs not enjoyable, which I didn't think you could ever do to a straight guy like me. But, they, but you know, the titty joints found a way. So that was that. Eventually, for like the last couple weeks of the Baltimore... For the last couple weeks of the Baltimore deployment, they put us in this, like, really nice place. And we had, like, a decent time. I was doing a lot of, uh... I was doing a lot of, of paperwork at this time. And my guys were knocking, and it was pretty decent for the rest of it. During this, this was the one thing that we won. We were trying to get a guy elected in his primary we're trying to get a republican elected in his primary and we actually won and that was great so i was like oh hell yeah right and essentially you're gonna hear that a lot was a lot of what make liberty win does make liberty win is essentially just a minion of yal young americans for liberty and legally they're supposed to say that they're not the same but like it's everybody talks to each other they're all talking to each other dude it's it's, it's basically, basically think of it as the same thing. So, we go, and we actually won once. All right, make Liberty win. The libertarian people I was working with actually won once. And we were like, yes. All right, and then at that point, they told us, okay, your next deployment, you got to go to Florida. So, I drove another guy and a ton of stuff and i drove from maryland to florida they paid for the gas but again you know all that wear and tear on my car they didn't pay for shit libertarians didn't pay for shit they looked at me and they said oh you're gonna pay for all this you're gonna pay you're gonna pay it for us and i'm just like okay we got down to florida and florida is full of the, some of the dumbest people i've ever met dude i'm sorry I actually did some door knocking with my guys, even though most of the time in Florida was spent me doing paperwork. I did a ton of paperwork for HQ, for the office, which was, I forgot where it was, but they have an office somewhere, and the people there will sometimes uh, tell the directors, me, out in the field to do their paperwork for them. So I did a ton of paperwork for these guys. And, uh, kind of, I was doing a lot of paperwork doing a lot of things and during this time there was something called revolution which was basically like a libertarian convention dude i'm not gonna lie it was fun and everything and i think it was great but it was kind of full of, of virgins and neckbeards okay dude i'm not gonna lie so during this time was revolution they gave they didn't pay me for it but they gave me three days off despite me being salary i didn't get paid for it but they they gave me three days off to go to Revolution. So I went because it was also in Florida and I was stationed, stationed. I was campaigning in Florida. I took me and there was one guy on my campaign that there was one guy in my campaign that was also going to Rev. So I took him with me because he didn't have a car. He just signed up to go to this convention with no way of getting there. So conveniently, he was with me. I took him. We went there. It was fun. It was great. It was there was one pretty cringe part where I was told to meet one of the so Young Americans for Liberty Yao was hosting this convention, and I get there and I get pulled to the side. Right, I get pulled to the side one morning. Basically, well, the first night I get there and we're all. And they have these speakers up, and dude, I'm sorry, bro, but the the liber the the speakers that the libertarians had were some of the most boring and unimaginable people the first night. It was so dumb. Like I, I remember, I I I paid all this money to go to a libertarian convention, and I go to a libertarian convention, and and they have these speakers, and I sit down, and it's this one dude going, um, I'm from Venezuela, and. Venezuela sucked after they put in socialism. Socialism doesn't work. 
you should be liberty minded and, and like legitimately and he made that in our speech nothing interesting happened no like interesting story and i'm sitting here and i'm like dude a literally 10 second fucking boomer meme that said socialism sucks because everybody knows uh venezuela like you know went the way the dodo after they put in socialism Everybody and their fucking mom already knew Venezuela sucks. You don't have to turn a five-second meme or a five-second statement into an hour uh, a speech. You don't have to do it to an hour speech. Well, that's what this guy did. It was so boring. So I remember we were all put in these, like, group chats. And I just casually uh, said in one of the group chats... I casually said in one of the group chats, like, um, one dude, he was running late, you know, because this was the first day. He was running late, and I respond, I said, you're not missing much, you know, the, the, it's really boring, it's kind of mid, the speakers aren't that interesting yet. They're not saying anything that you, you haven't seen from memes. So I said that. The next day, one of the people running the place, one of the people of Yale, pulls me to the side, and he's like, okay, so you're director, and, you know, you replaced one of the, you know, he mentions one of the guys that got fired that replaced him. You're replacing him. And I'm like, yeah? And he's like, oh, I, you know, I'm sorry, he got fired. He was a really cool guy. And I'm like, well, he got, you know, I'm like, I understand that. He was probably a really cool guy, but he got fired because he never did his job. He's like, but he was a cool guy. And then the la Yao guy looks at me, and he goes, okay, so we just need you to know that some of the stuff that you're saying in the in the like the revolution group chat it's a little negative towards revolution okay and you know you're a leader so we're kind of hoping that you would delete that and be more positive going forward so let me explain basically what he just said this guy it was completely chill with the motherfucker that got promoted and then didn't do his job and got fired but he was literally crying to me and keep in mind the libertarians run off memes if the if there wasn't like facebook right now like facebook and instagram and twitter where the libertarians just spam memes about government sucks there would be 95 percent less libertarians they run off off jokes and memes and satire and he's telling me that I, I dare critiqued his lame ass speakers uh, that I that I need to be more chill. And I was just like, you know, okay, whatever. You know, I was I was nice about him, like, yeah, okay, okay. Uh but I, I was not impressed. I was not impressed that it's young Americans for Liberty and all these liberty organizations are are drowning in bureaucracy they are they're drowning in bureaucracy and they're so careful about their own image and all that sort of crap and i was just like okay whatever you know they they they're just another company they're another company running off donations paying the higher ups a ton of money uh trying to soak up as much resources out of young people who don't have savings or their own cars yet as they can and running off that. That's essentially what the libertarians were doing. So I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. So I get done. So anyways, I get done with that. And I got an award. Only five people got an award that year. It was like a, it's like a torchbearer award. And essentially what the torchbearer award was, like five people, and I don't know if it's five people every year, but only a handful of people every year get this big award that says, hey, look, you work really hard for liberty. You know, out of the hundreds of people we employ and out of the, the hundreds of campuses that we have chapters at, uh, you're one of the best. You really, you give yourself to liberty. Well, all the shit that I had gone through, they decided that I, you know, and I was still working for them. You know, I was, I was getting used, but I was still working hard for them. They decided that I deserved an award. So I got this big award. And because I got an award, it got me this fancy dinner with like the CEO of Yale. I don't know if you'd call her like the CEO, but this this one, it's this skinny chick, dude. It's this skinny pale chick that she was put in as a token. Um, and I'll explain later what Yal 2 was, but Yal 2 happened and she was put in as a token. It's like a token woman. And she just, she didn't really want to talk. 
uh, she didn't really want to have like a conversation. Like I had dinner with her, right? You know, all the all the the five guys who got torchbear awards were told there was this fancy dinner, and we were basically used as mouthpieces because uh, after we got these awards, we were herded over to this place for this fancy dinner with like the CEO of Yal and like all of like Yal's big donors, right? Like they, I remember I met like uh, what the bazooka Jew? I forget the guy's name, but. Oh, man, dude, I can't forget his name. I'll put it in an editing. But anyways, like, all of Yal's big donors, we had dinner with them. And, like, dude, none of them wanted to talk to me. I was a mouthpiece to show, hey, look, you know, people work hard for this place. Uh, Please give them money. And it was just like, okay, whatever, whatever. And then after that, after that, um, for, like, the last night of Revolution, after we did all the, uh, after we did all the big stuff, was like you know there was karaoke uh there was drinking there was games right uh it was a little sus because the hr lady for make liberty win which we only had one hr lady so basically all of hr was like legitimately uh uh drinking with the employees of make liberty win and she was like dude that they weren't doing anything like bad but she was like getting friendly with them and she was drinking with them and I didn't go drink with them, but I was, like, watching them, like, bro, this is a little sus, not gonna lie. And, um, <clears throat> you know, remember this HR lady for later, because this is coming up, you best believe. So, it wouldn't be a story about me if HR wasn't involved. So, anyways, uh, I talked to some guys, uh, I met the AK guy, like, Herrera, whatever his name is. I met some big Yao donors, met a ton of cool Yao people. And then after that ended... Uh, remember we, we went home, not went home. We went back on to deployment. We had, we did the rest of the Florida deployment. One dude from my deployment got fired because he refused to work and any work he did do, he was just, he was just lying about. He just wasn't doing anything. He would drive out and then he would sit there and like eat McDonald's again. Um, cause essentially there's two kinds of people that work for the libertarians. There's basically two kinds of libertarians. There's the people that, honest to God, believe in, like, liberty for everyone and doing what they can for everybody. And then the second and probably the bigger portion of of libertarians, people that lurk for liberty, is people that just don't want anybody telling them personally what to do. And that's all they care about is just them being able to do whatever they want. And Yal hired a lot of that second thing. Yal... And Make Liberty Win and Hazlitt hired a lot of the second one of people just kind of like wanted that. Don't get me wrong, I met some really nice people from the first camp I'm still friends with today. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if they still want to be friends with me after this video. But that was just... Uh, he got fired. And after he got fired, I was the only one with a car. So I it was up to me to drive everybody... And do several hours of paperwork in my car every day. And we were an hour drive away from where we were working. So every day I would drive an hour in. And then I would spend 45 minutes driving everyone to where they needed to start working. And then I would attempt to do some paperwork. And then while trying to do paperwork, one of them would need something. Like, oh, I need a bathroom break. Oh, I need to go to Taco Bell. I'm hungry. Oh, come pick me up. So I'd have to stop my paperwork, go pick them up, because these 30-year-olds have never fucking owned a car in their life. Pick them up, take them where they need to go. And I would be so busy all throughout the day, I wouldn't get too much paperwork done. And then I would get back, and the higher-ups would give me shit, like, oh, you didn't get much paperwork done. Yeah, because you hired a bunch of freaking 30-year-old autists that can't tie their own shoes... And I'm babysitting 30-year-olds for fucking liber for the fucking libertarians in some state that are sitting in an air-conditioned office. Like, dude, Jesus Christ, bro. Sorry that I can't do everything at once all the time. So, we finished up with the Florida thing. Florida people are dumb. We This is another campaign. We lost. We didn't get it. After that, they said, okay, you're going to drive from Florida back up to New Hampshire. I was going back up to New Hampshire. <clears throat> and... 
they said, okay, you know, drive up to New Hampshire. We'll give you three days to drive to New Hampshire. We'll pay for gas. Again, like I've been saying, didn't pay for wear and tear on the car. They didn't pay. They just paid for, like, gas and then, like, some cheap, uh, cheap motel rooms on the way up. That's what they gave me. So, three days of driving later, I was driving another guy and all our stuff up. Finally get up there. I have my new crew. And we get settled in this one place. We're supposed, so I'm supposed to be doing paperwork in this one place. Literally, they got me a place in, like, the New Hampshire woods that didn't, that, like, had basically no fucking internet. It was basically no internet there. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, dude. So we get up there. Um, everybody was, like, getting a room. You know, everybody, we, we give everybody a room. We get, we're in this ha house in the middle of the woods. Again, this house is an hour and something away from where we were working. So every day, I had to drive people an hour in. I'd drive them all over, drive them an hour back. Every day. I was not paid for wear and tear. And I was not able to choose where I stayed. This is what I was told to do. I said, here, they said, here you go. And I'm not getting paid that much to begin with. But hey, we got to do it for liberty, right? Even though we fucking lose everything. Even though the, the, the libertarian guys were losing everything. So it's just, it, man, dude, it sucked. So this was, so we're up here. And it's August. And actually, I'll be honest. Uh, New Hampshire is like if you're not working you know new hampshire is beautiful right so we were basically in the woods we had uh, a campfire you know we'd have all this time and we actually had some fun at this airbnb i'm not gonna lie and i i just dude i remember grilling i remember cooking over the campfire like i was cooking pork chops and steaks over a campfire like in the new hampshire woods it was great dude it was a wonderful time i was having great essentially then i had but the work day sucked again the same problem i didn't have time to babysit 30 year old autists and because that that's basically um all the libertarians can hire is like the social neats that really aren't doing anything else so and that's not everybody who works for them there's a lot of good people and friends who work for them but that's large chunk of also people that are working there right it's probably like half of them so man dude it sucks so anyways we're up there and this is where a lot of shit started to go down so we're working up there and all of a sudden you know i'm working for make liberty win all of a sudden blah 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 this one dude this like he was literally this 400 pound jew uh, there was this 400 pound like Jewish guy, literally fat as fuck, doesn't have a car. I was driving him back from work one day, and I remember I told everybody, I'm like, okay, you know, work's done, clock out, right? Because you had to clock in and out on your phone. And I told everybody, all right, work's done, clock out, I'll drive you guys back. And he's like, we don't clock out for the drive back. And I'm like, but you're not working, yeah, you have to clock out. He's like, no, we don't do that. And I'm like, no, HQ is literally saying, you know, like, hey, we're not going to pay you for, for driving to work, right? And so I'm just like, bro, take it up with HQ, do what you want to do, you know? So what the 400-pound Jewish guy did was he, he, he got, like, this little shadow group going. Because at the, around this point, HQ started actually did started cracking down on people who were getting paid while they weren't working because a lot of people weren't doing their jobs a lot of people were faking doing their jobs they wouldn't work and uh basically they would also like like they would clock they would stop working like at two hours early and like go to the grocery store or, like go to the gym on their way home and then they would get home and then they'd clock out and that's what a lot of them did right and HQ started cranking down on it, like, hey guys, you know, none of you guys are like hitting numbers, none of you guys are hitting metrics. You know, we're not gonna pay you when you're not working. Oh boy. Well, like I said, a lot of the libertarians, the quote unquote libertarians that they hired, uh, were thirty year old people, thirty year old guys who can't take care of themselves, who just didn't like it when anybody told them what to do. So they all got into the shadow group. They all started complaining. 
started getting together. You know, like, they're gonna, you know, they're making us work while we're clocked in. We can't do this. This isn't right. And, and, and you know, that sort of thing. And at one point, uh, I, at one, one point, one of them, the, the 400 pound Jewish guy, the really fat Jewish guy, starts like telling me about the stuff they're saying. I didn't ask him. He just randomly starts telling me about stuff they're saying in this little shadow group they got going on about how it's a, it's illegal that they're not paying them for driving home or something. And they found one quote in like the U S law and code that said it was illegal. And I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't say anything. And eventually he started causing so much crap that another director who's who sided you know with this shadow group who said that we should they should always be clocked in for the drive home that they shouldn't have to you know work while they're clocked in uh yeah this is the libertarian party folks uh basically went to the boss and said here here's what's happening here's what we believe in and the boss got upset boss calls me up and says hey you know what's this is your worker what's he saying in this chat and I just straight up told him, I said, you know, he's saying, uh, you know, I said, oh, you know, he's saying this, this, and this. I just, I didn't let anything back, dude. I just said, okay, well, he, uh, he's saying this, this, and this about the company. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, the next day, uh, my boss pulled probably one of the dumbest fucking moves imaginable, uh, calls him up and... So he said, your director, me, he was talking about me. He's like, your director told me you're saying this, this, and this. He had no context of, oh, hey, look, I called him and I asked him and he, he said this or something. Or, or like, he didn't he didn't leave it like up to interpretation. Like, oh, somebody told me you're saying this. He calls, he calls the fat Jewish guy, calls him up and says, your boss told me you're saying this. And, was, and basically said it like that. And I'm like, God damn it, this fucking idiot. So the Jewish guy... Uh, totally on his own accord, you know, totally not because he's part of the small hat, long nose tribe, right? Uh, starts, you know, working around, starts trying to, he starts, you know, he starts working in the shadows. He wants to get me fired now, right? He doesn't want me working, uh, anymore. You know, he, in his eyes, and I did the, I did confirm this later with one of the higher ups after I left. Uh, he, he legitimately called in six so many days that he only worked 60% of the time. And when he did work, most of his stuff was fake. So he basically wasn't working. He was getting paid to, to sit and free Airbnbs around the country. And he didn't do his job. But, and they knew this, so he was never getting a promotion to director. They knew that. But in his mind... Because I didn't defend him uh, when he got caught trying to dismantle the company. In his mind, he, I was the reason why he was never going to be a director now. And he got mad. So he, you know, Mr. Long Nose Small Hat starts getting people together. You know, finding, you know, he gets all these people together. Um, gets a lot of people riled up. There was like one dude I had worked with in the first New Hampshire campaign. Uh, I mentioned that basically uh, the campaign only happened because of me. Uh, without my car, there would have been a few days that they couldn't have worked. Uh, without my car, a lot of them wouldn't be able to get to go where they needed to go. And sort of stuff like that. Well, that hurt his ego that I said this in another group chat. So, So the dude I worked with in the New Hampshire campaign... And the, the fat Jewish guy and some other dudes get together. And there was like this other director who was upset that I got an award that he didn't, even though he spent his whole day at the gym and he never did uh, his paperwork and his paperwork was bad when he did do it. You know, they're all get together and they literally took a day off to, to look at stuff I've done and try to compile a list of things to get me fired. And they found a meme group chat I was in. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, this meme group chat was full of some based memes, right? It was racist shit, it was misogyny shit. Uh, it was it was the good memes. I was posting some good memes. Well, they, they screenshotted that. And in <clears throat> they screenshotted all that, and they screenshotted a bunch of things I did. 
and said but they went back months they basically went back like six months and they literally took the day off and they had a whole team of guys trying to find out everything wrong i did and they compiled it together in a list and they went to hr and they said here you go this is the guy you've hired he's bad we don't like him uh you should fire him so i remember dude because my boss then he's like you know he's asking me about it so he's like uh did you did you really you know i i think he was expecting me to say oh that wasn't me posting that or something but basically my boss is like hey did you post this and i'm like fuck yeah i did <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, bro. He's like, hey, did you, were you, were you know, were you posting, like, these messed up memes? I'm like, fuck yeah, it was, bro. That shit was funny, dude, you know. So, basically, HR contacts me. And, I, you know, I do the whole song and dance. I don't deny anything. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, no, I understand that stuff was, was inappropriate. Um, You know, it was a private group. It was a private group chat that had nothing to do with work. But I understand that, that sh you know, that stuff was inappropriate. Uh, you know, and I'm so sorry about the, all this, blah, 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 you know, but, you know, and that's, that's basically what happened. Well, after them thinking of two weeks to do, and I, later I was told this, uh, I'm not supposed to know this, but I know it. Essentially what happened was all the higher ups really liked me. They wanted to keep me on. So all the higher ups get together and they're like, well, how can we keep this guy on? We don't want to fire him for this. You know, they probably actually, they probably thought that shit was based in Keck pilled themselves, not gonna lie, but they're like, how do we, how do we keep them on, you know? So basically, the HR lady, yes, the HR lady who goes and drinks, you know, and ha has, has some fun time at conventions with her workers, is saying that I should get fired for the shit I posted in a private group chat. Um, and a lot of the higher ups were like, no, we shouldn't fire this guy, we shouldn't fire this guy. So they're sit so they were sitting there and they thought, okay, well what if we fine him? And I'll keep it real, dude. If they said, Oh, well, you can keep your job, but we'll fine you for having a private group chat with memes, I would have just quit right there. I'm like f I would have been fuck no, dude. But they wanted to fine me, but they I don't think they could do that. And they said that they didn't think they could do that. So essentially they all got together and they were like, Okay. Here's an idea. We're gonna demote him back to door knocker. And we'll, we'll, you know, we'll give him a golden parachute. We're going to demote him back to door knocker. Uh, and, and we'll get him a job working for some other Liberty thing that's cool and based. And that's what they did. That was the, the, that was their compromise because the, the freaking witch at HR wanted me fired. And she was the only one who wanted me fired. Everybody else wanted me there. But... It, at the end of the day, it's sort of like HR's decision, right? So, she was like, so they call me up, and after two weeks, I'm literally driving an hour. I woke up extra early before my team, because I needed to drive to get more pamphlets for them. So I stop, and I join the call, say, hey, you know, because they called me up, and they said, okay, hey, um, they're like, we, hey, uh, we have decided to go forward. You know, we don't want this to be another YAL 2. And I'll explain what YAL 2 is in a second. We don't want this to be another YAL 2. So going forward, we're going to demote you. And they're like, you're going to be a door knocker. You're going to get paid as a door knocker again. You know, you're going to get less pay. Um, you're still going to have to drive everybody around and, and give up all your fucking time and everything. But you're just going to get paid less again. And I'm like, okay. And this was, there was like three days left in this campaign. And I'm like, okay. And after I got off the phone with that, I just kind of sat there because I had, I had pulled off to the side of the road to have this uh, call because I was you know I was still on the way to get the pamphlets and stuff. And I just sat there, dude. And I just sat there for a second. I'm like, okay, I guess I got demoted, you know. <laughs> I'm like, jeez, I'm dude. So, anyways, but but this is a good juncture to tell you all about Yao Two. So essentially, Yao Two. Uh, Yao Two was during i think it was back in like 2020 or something was during a time when a bunch of the higher ups in yow like i said and i can't say this enough a lot of the motherfuckers in yow not you know i don't know what's a mean where they're like oh you're not a real libertarian a lot of the motherfuckers in yow okay are not 
are not there because they're like true libertarian for the people. They're there because they don't want anybody telling them what to do. Right. They just want to be able to do whatever they want with no consequences. And they call it libertarianism. So, Yaltu was a part when it was, I think it might have been more, but I'll, I I only know of the CEO guy. There was like the CEO guy of Yao was, he was outed for allegedly, okay, I don't need to get sued for saying this shit, but allegedly, like he was, a, he was like a fucking rapist and a creep. He was going to the, the Liberty Conventions and he was offering like girls like uh, promotions and shit if they would do stuff for him. And, like, there was a point where one girl said she was raped while she was, like, passed out drunk or something by this guy. And, like, d during the out, too, a bunch of chicks basically coming out with fucking proof and shit that this guy did it. That he allegedly did it. Don't, don't fucking sue me for defamation, you fucking rapist. No, but, um... And so, essentially, I was actually kind of taken aback that they took... That they were saying, oh, we don't want another yell too. So they were basically saying, hey, look, your memes are bad. We don't want to, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't posting any jokes about like rape or anything. I, I was just, it's just like, um, women dumb or racist jokes or shit like that. Right. Which were funny, but I wasn't like saying, I was never saying I was going to like do anything like that. So I was taken aback. I'm like. Why the fuck are you saying I'm on the same level as, like, an alleged rapist or some shit like that, right? Like, what the fuck? So, anyways, which, and I can understand why they wanted to get me gone, because, you know, had all these, had, like, you know, the, 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 the fat Jew and, and the dude from New Hampshire and the other director and all these bad actors uh, who wanted me gone, you know, they could have just went, like, real public with these memes and said, oh, look who Yell hires, right? Like, who, look who Li Make Liberty Win hires. It. So if Make Liberty Win and Yell hadn't demoted me and got me out of there, it could have looked bad for them. So I understand why they demoted me. I don't hold that against them. But I was like, it still didn't feel fair, especially when, like, in this group chat, a lot of these people that were trying to get me fired were posting the same exact shit, dude. Posting the same stuff I was. Same stuff. But I didn't go after them. And I never went after them during this entire time. Still to this day haven't gone after them. But they went after me. And I got demoted. And then hired in another place. It's basically what happened. So right after I got the news of demotion. I messaged like my boss and a, and a couple people that uh, still liked working with me and stuff. And I essentially messaged them all and I said hey look. Um, I just got said I was demoted. Um, you know, these guys do not pay enough. You know, they basically, if you're a door knocker and you have a car, they use you. You do not get paid more than you have to spend to work for them. That was my first five months working for them. They used me. And I was not going to get used again. So I basically said, hey, look, I got demoted. I will not continue to work for these guys. Uh, I was going to finish the campaign. There was like three days left. I said, I'll finish the campaign, <clears throat> and then I'll be done. Right? And that's when I got a call from another guy. And this guy also used to work for Yao until he said Yao was bullshit. And then he started his own Liberty thing in the Midwest. And he calls me up and he said, hey, if you drive to Minnesota and work for me, you know, I'll pay you a bit more than what they're paying. Yeah, sure, okay. So I finished the last three days of that campaign. I left them, never looked back. Uh, fuck those guys. I left them. I basically got a promotion, though. So I, I, I drove from New Hampshire to Minnesota for the next job. And there was less paperwork. I was given a lot less paperwork. I was still door knocking, but I was basically getting paid like I was a director. And it, it was it was actually a lot better of a job. It was a lot better of a job working in Minnesota for the most part. And I had a chill time there. And I actually met some really nice guys there. And we're still friends to this day. And I actually 
you know, moved out to this sort of area. I'm like in the Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin area, but I still see them from time to time. And I still do like some occasional Liberty work on the side, but it's essentially, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs working for the Libertarians for the year, for a year. And I just, dude, I got to keep it real, bro. If anybody, if anybody, you know, watching this, I mean, probably a lot of people, a lot of people watch me are older than me. I'm 23. So most, they're not going to probably try to uh, recruit you guys. A lot of you guys already have like full-time decent jobs. You wouldn't leave for this sort of shit. But like, if you have a car and some like, you know, and, and one of these Liberty places tries to recruit you, you say no, just, just say no, it's not worth it. Uh, as far as was it worth it? I mean, well, if as far as was it worth it for me? To be honest, I'd I'd, I'd say something like, new. I was new, neutral, right? Like I, I went through a lot of shit, um, because a lot of people with egos, and a lot of people, uh, couldn't take care of themselves, but they were entitled and they felt they were owed my time, my car, my fucking money, and. And the Liberty people I worked for, Hazlitt Coalition, Young Americans for Liberty, Make Liberty Win, a lot of these companies I worked for also felt they were entitled to my car, my time. They were entitled to everything I had, and I had to give everything to them. Right? And as far as, as I had some great times, met some great people, I'm still friends, it was great stuff. But as far as this all goes, dude, I, I just gotta, I just gotta keep it real, man. Um, I don't think it was, it was like neutral for me, but it, it definitely wouldn't be worth it for another person. If you're homeless and you don't have a car, but you have like the money for a plane ticket to arrive to a deployment, like maybe then it's worth it for you because then you could get housing and you can, you know, make somebody else drive you everywhere. Uh, and you can door knock, but as far as me, you know, with my car and all the money I had to pay for them just for them to fuck me, it I don't think it was worth it. I don't think the, you know, and basically all I came away with this was I was no longer, like, you know, like I said at the beginning, I was a really big libertarian. I got burnt out on politics, dude. I don't know what I am now, but I don't call myself a libertarian because I've, I've seen the libertarians. The li a lot of the libertarians don't actually care about liberty. They care about themselves. And... Th they want to be able to do stuff without repercussions. And that is a lot of the people in Yale. That is a lot of the people in Hazlitt. That is a lot of the people in Make Liberty Win. You know, they have some... These places have some great people working in them that are nothing like that. But they also have some, you know, a lot of bad actors that are also like that. And I I kind of came to the realization that, you know, even though they, they take everything from me and then they fuck me and then they lose all their uh, political races, right... Even if even if the libertarians were winning, okay, the libertarians would kind of create a power vacuum, and I wouldn't I wouldn't want them, I wouldn't want, like obviously, dude, I I don't, I don't sit here and I like I'm I'm not sitting here like oh yeah, dude, conservatives or liberals are great, dude, fuck those guys too, bro, but holy shit, dude, I I would, there's a lot of libertarians I would not want in office. I wouldn't. And I, I just, I can't say that I'm a libertarian anymore after working with the libertarians. I can still say I hate the government, dude. I fucking hate the government. Government, I still hate paying taxes. I still hate a lot of fucking bullshit arbitrary laws and stuff you need to do. But, man, I just, I can't with these guys anymore. I, I think the libertarians have left a bad taste in my mouth. It's it's the sad truth. Sad truth, and I would I would I would advise against a lot of people: do not work for Young Americans for Liberty. Don't work for Make Liberty Win. Don't work for Hazlitt. A lot of times they reach out to younger people who don't have a purpose in life, like they did with me, and then hire them, then use them up. The young people don't have nest eggs. Young people usually don't have savings. If they lose what they have at the moment, young people are fucked. And these liberty places will use what the young people have at the moment and then leave them fucked. And even a lot of the good people on top, when they see this happen, they don't care. 
they don't care and they will continue to do it right even the the good libertarians that i've been talking about they don't care you bring this shit up to them they don't care there was a guy on my deployment like i said with me they told me to drive down bad roads and then i would drive down bad roads trying to do my job it would fuck up my car and i would literally get hit with like a three thousand dollar repair bill that they would not help me at all on they said fuck you get that shit fixed so you can keep using your car to drive around other people that showed up to our deployments without cars that's what they would tell him there was another guy they told him you need to park here and go start knocking okay well he did that he came back his car had gotten broken into his car got fucked up and even though he was using his car for work so so the libertarians could have a campaign they 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 didn't pay anything they said oh your car got fucked up that sucks for you and he just he didn't like exactly have money to just stand up and fix that and he got fucked there's so many so many stories like that from me and other people who gave all they could to the libertarians and, and yao and mlw make liberty win and all these people and then they just and then all these big libertarian companies just said fuck you you know we got what we wanted fuck you and there was a lot of people working for them that just wanted to get what they wanted and everybody else can go fuck themselves so dude i'm i'm sorry uh i i'm just like bro you know you can if you go on these deployments you can make some great friends and have some great time and like i said dude if you it may be like maybe if you still live with your parents or you're homeless and you don't have a car you could get some decent enjoyment out of this job. You know, like I said, we had great times. Uh, you know, I had great times, you know, eating out uh, with, you know, my group and going to have friends and um, all this sort of stuff. But the job itself, it's just, if you have anything to give, it will be taken. And it's not worth it. It's just not. And that's sad to say. That really is. You know, but I, it's really coming to bite the libertarians in the ass now. Like I said, they lost basically in the year, in the election cycle of 2022 for the U.S., they basically lost everything. The The libertarians basically lost, like, all their fucking uh, races. You know, they lost all their shit. Um, you know, the, the revolution, the little YAL convention they have every year that's coming up again this year, like, nobody's going to it i see them they keep increasing discounts for it we'll give you 30 percent off we'll give you 40 percent off uh we'll pay your gas to drive to fucking florida for a convention they're they're fucked because nobody wants to go to their conventions uh a lot of people don't want to work for them anymore you know and they're fucking themselves over dude and i just i don't feel bad for them because they kind of fucked me first right so now they're getting fucked so man dude it it is what it is i wish them and like you know all, there's still a ton of good people i still talk to work for them i wish them i wish everybody you know all the good people still work for them you know the best everything man but just, just i they taught me the hard way to not be a libertarian and you know that's just, that's just kind of my story you know spending a year working for the libertarians all right yeah that was a long one uh, I definitely, there's still some stuff that I missed, but that's all the big stuff, working for the Libertarians. It was a long rant. I'd like to thank anybody who managed to listen through all that. That was a long one, dude. I'm going to thank everybody who managed to listen through all that. If anybody got this far, you're an absolute fucking king, dude. Um, Thank you all so much for all the support you've been giving me on all the videos. Uh, please do the great stuff. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike the video, dislike it. Comment down below what you thought. And I thank you guys all, and I hope to see you guys uh, hopefully next week. I'm going to start having some Fallout videos out. I know I keep using um, COD videos in the background. It's probably getting old. Next week, we're going to have some Fallout stuff out. We're going to have why Nick Valentine is literally us. We're going to have Can You Beat Fallout 4 as Patrick Bateman. All this great stuff. So thank you all so much for the support, and I hope you kings have a great day.